Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to the GSL Code A. I am Moltrap. With me here is Wolf. And we have already seen our first foreign player advance to the next round to what we call round two, what you might call the round of 32 in Code A. And uh, it was a really exciting match between Sen and True. Next up, yeah, as you can see there, the match winner is going to play versus Sniper, Sniper who, who was, played on the yeah. other stream. Sniper was victorious on the other stream, so for those of you guys who didn't catch that... That's kind of surprising, actually. Yeah, that was a little bit of a surprising result. I'll have to go and watch those VODs. Obviously, I couldn't... Like, my brain is really good, and I have, like, psychic powers, but I couldn't see, like, how you, that played out. You know what time. that means? That means Clyde has been eliminated from the GSL. Yeah, Clyde is out of the GSL, guys. So, wow. that's something to consider. Uh, you know, I didn't actually see... I didn't see uh, Clyde yeah. actually around the studio, so... Uh, All right, we're actually going to take a look at uh, yeah. part of the replay from that's one actually, of those matches. That's that's really exciting. I didn't you guys know didn't catch that on the other stream? Cool, cool. Oh, this is a replay of our oh, match. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Never mind. This is a replay from our match with Sen. Uh, so, you know, you, we can talk about this all, all night long. Really smart decision making by Sen. He got the fast spire. He really reacted well to what he saw with his opponent. No Roach Warren, his opponent's droning up a little bit, and you can see True Spire is just a little bit behind. So this becomes checkmate. When the third base is started, there's a Spire on the way, no Roach Warren, no real pressure. I mean, you can see he's got his Roach Warren here, but he just does not have the s sufficient amount of Roaches. By the time the Spire is started, he needs Roaches to pressure with. He doesn't have them yet. Sen slows down the Roach pressure with these Zerlings, which is his plan all along. And this is checkmate. What what can Sen do? If he moves out with the Roaches, the Mules will come out and stop them anyways. And if he moves out the Roaches, also he'll lose his third base, which he ends up doing anyways because he's indecisive with his Roaches here. Yep. And it, it was just checkmate from the moment the Spire was made, to, to be blunt and perfectly honest with you guys. Yeah, just because yeah, I mean, he had those Roaches late, and it could have been could have been a different story. Like you're talking about, if he already had the Roach worn up, he was always producing Roaches, then... You know, he might have just overwhelmed that third and done a lot of damage while the Munis were producing, but... And as our observer just highlighted there, you know, he made the Hydro Send because this is True's moment where he was like, Oh my god. I think, I think <laughs> I'm gonna like, lose this game because second. he's got to be going Mutas. He doesn't have any Roaches. He put this pressure on with that many Speedlings. He's got to be going Mutas. So he makes the Hydro Send, but it's just far too late. No Creep Spread to use the Hydros for pressure. Even if he had good Creep Spread, Hydros just do not do not do well pressuring against a Mutalist play. You can use them defensively only, and later in conjunction with Roaches if the game goes longer. But on a map like this, when you're stuck on two base, it's checkmate. Well played by Sen. Yeah, very well done. This is the moment where he just comes out with the Mutas and everything changes. You can see that supplies aren't too different, but he just starts taking out Overlords, yeah. taking out everything. And that's a big, a bit of a mistake by True. He had actually about four to five Overlords out on the map. And Sen actually had Overlords uh, spotting for Overlords on the bottom of the map, found a bunch of extra Overlords. Uh, more of a coincidence than anything else, but Sen just reacted to what he saw, cleaned up all the Overlords that were in Vision. And so that is, uh, that's what we've seen here already. We're not gonna watch the whole thing. We're gonna jump back on camera. You can see our smiling faces. And uh, our first map here is going to be Dual Sight, actually. Yep. So yeah, next up we're gonna have July Zerg versus June. Yeah, and I'm really curious to see how this goes. July Zerg, he was actually in Code A last season, got all the way up to the up and down matches, but then couldn't quite get out of Code S. He actually had a pretty good up and down match run, but just didn't get into Code S. And so here he is back in Code A, June. Yeah, June, probably best well known for knocking Moonglade out of Code <laughs> A. Uh, that. That's basically what he's known for. His old idea, which some of you guys might remember, is Next Destination. And I actually used to practice with the guy oh, yeah. on Korean server with the Clan Next. Um, I practiced with him quite a bit, like, long ago, mm -hmm. about a year and a half ago. But I practiced with this guy. He's pretty good. Um, he hasn't improved a lot. I have to say, like, this guy has just kind <laughs> of... He's been around. Yeah. And he's never really had his time in the spotlight. And basically here, he may knock... July Zerg out of the GSL, he may end July's career if he executes his builds correctly today. Yeah. Only time will tell. I think July Zerg is definitely the favorite here, but it's all going to depend on how July Zerg executes things. He has a tendency to be very unpredictable, <coughs> and yeah. July, you just do not know. Uh, yeah, we're uh, we're going to see June here and we'll see what he has in store, but you know, 
I, you know, he just played in the team league the other day, and I was talking about on the team league that, you know, I was like, oh, well, this guy Vines, like, he just has the horrible record. Actually, people were, like, saying that I was, like, too hard on him. But he's, he's like, 3-20, and 20, man. Like, no, how can you not be hard on someone with a record like that? <laughs> and Vines was able to beat June still. Like, and I remember June being, I think he was the guy that, like, hey, double all in bomber, like, four remember, seasons ago and failed. Do you remember uh, so. Vines wins, man? That was back when he, he was, his name was, his ID was pronounced Venus, okay? Oh, yeah, they were still pronouncing he it that way. He cannon rushed on uh, uh, Steps of War, I like, can't remember, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like the map that must not be named. Uh, so, I mean, Vines, he's definitely, like, a player that's been around, he does well on the ladder, he's a strong player compared to like the foreign scene but as far as in Korea goes he has not had a lot of success <laughs> yeah no oh. not at all but uh June couldn't even beat Vines in the team league the other day so well this is a different matchup though this yeah consider that he's been preparing mostly for this matchup that's he's true. known about this for a long time the bracket's been out for a while he's been knowing I gotta play against July Zerg yeah um I'm gonna play he probably like tells his uh, practice partners to just sometimes do crazy things. He's like, I have to play against July, so it's like, he's like, sometimes can you like do something that nobody would expect and then <laughs> kill me with it? I need to know what that's like so I can do it on TV. <laughs> oh, it's true. It's true. That's July Zerg. I mean, he is, uh, you never know when he's going to start attacking and, and he'd, he can just be so aggressive sometimes. So... Now the thing is, is it's I think it's basically come, gonna come down to July Zerg. It's July Zerg's match to win or lose. He is definitely the favorite. I think he's definitely in, even in better shape. But we were talking about this earlier. July Zerg, he hasn't been playing his best lately, and we're we're not sure if he's like he is slumping a little bit. You know, slumping or he's similarly to Nada. You know, Nada didn't <clears throat> slump quite as hard as July, but both these players are former. You know, they're both really strong former uh, pro gamers and so you know they're slumping a little bit and you know some people are wondering is Nada going to end his career you know he opened his online shopping mall yeah. and July needs to go to the military soon so uh, there's a lot of concern it looks like our players yep. are ready yeah and the other thing I was thinking I mean July Zerg was known here's the matchup right here July Zerg on the left went from S to A to the up and down matches to A ranking 7th he has, I mean, he has been in Code Ascent for a long time. He's also, been up uh, there for a while. He played in the Arena of Legends Had King been. of Kongs tournament and True. did decently in that tournament as well. Yeah. Um, and of course, you guys can see Destination or June, I should say, going up from B to A. His ranking 80th, pretty low down there. I love our, our new screen. It just shows like really how the slick. players got there. It's slick, man. It's almost as slick as Legend. Almost. <laughs> almost. Um, yeah, something I want to point out, July Zerg, um, oh, he's got a really cool keyboard, look at that. Yeah, he always does this with his keyboard, he, the Zowie keyboards have a special, uh, orange key, or it's, I guess it's like a little bit pinker on this one, uh -huh. for the arrow keys, and I guess he just took a bunch of Zowie keyboards since he's a sponsor and took all the arrow keys off and made it all of his keys. <laughs> Are those all arrow keys, actually? I, I think so, I believe so. Or did he just get some custom keys? Maybe that's the case, that, too. Because he's that cool. Anyway, game number one of this series is about to start. July Zerg's game to win or lose. Will he prove that he is the god of war to Sheen and come out on top? Or will he show his inconsistency and will June show us some new moves and win the game? We're going to find out here in just a moment at the GSL Code A. Over here at the left side of the map is the month, which was the last time we saw June in the GSL. Started July. Actually, I'm not sure if that was it. I know it's. Been a while. <laughs> I know it's been a while, but uh, he's like, it's a one in twelve chance. Like I might as well just say it. <laughs> and his opponent, of course, formerly known as Next Destination, he is. Zenex June. Joining Zenex as the clans merge. Now, something a lot of people don't know about this clan, I, I know I say it a lot, but I should make sure it's clear because a lot of people ask me about this. Uh, the clan Nex and the clan Zenith are completely separate clans. The team is a culmination of the best players from both clans who are able to join the team. And For example, June, aka Destination, is still on the Nex clan, but he's also a part of the team. And there are other players like Core 
who is part of Xenex, but is also part of the clan Zenith. So he's in both the clan Nex and in the team Xenex. I see. Actually, I just looked it up. It was actually last April. Oh, wow. Last April that June was in uh, Code A, be got beaten by Bomber. That was when Bomber won Code A, actually, I think. Um, anyway, yeah, heavily favored. A lot of the fans, 85% of the fans think that July Zerg is going to win. So And rightly so. I, rightly I think so. As far as results go, as far as experience goes, everyone's hearts are probably thinking, yeah, I probably July will do this, but... It's all up to July, man, to, yep. to win or lose here. Now, July Zerg, he was known in Brood War as being basically one of the fastest programmers there was. He had he had an APM of over 400, Brood War APM regularly. In fact, there was, there was a graphic that still goes around sometimes that showed, like, they used to show, like, the peak APM, and there was apparently a moment in one game where July Zerg got up to 800 APM in a game. Yeah. That's how freaking fast he was. It was ridiculous. And I watched him play his Code S games, he was like, just, you know, seemed like he was just taking it casually, hanging around like 200 APM, which is really fast for normal human beings, but for July Zerg, that means he didn't care, yeah. you know? So that's why I have to wonder if July Zerg's going to bring his A game or if maybe he's his, his mind is out of it already, you know? Well, we'll see. He's definitely on his last life here. Um, reactor going down for Jejun. Of course, he's going to be doing Reactor Hell and Expand. There's the command center. Well, in a few moments. It's in the SCP a few seconds too early, but... It's gonna pop up. There I, it is. I, I think <laughs> I think Zelizer is still very capable, but I think this the military service is looming, and he he knows he has to do it pretty soon, and that might take some of the fight out of him. Yeah. I mean, Zelizer is the guy who came back after having not done really much of anything for four years and won an OSL in 2009. So I want to point out something uh, that Jajun has done that most people do not do is he actively tried to stop all of July Zerg Zerglings from scouting this. He failed. He caught some of the Zerglings. He wasn't able to catch all of them, but he actively tried to stop the Zerglings from the map with those two Marines and the SCB to prevent the Zerglings from scouting the reactor. They did see it, though, so unfortunately for Jajun, his plan failed. But I like that he was active on the map and being aggressive with those Marines and the SCB trying to stop that scout. I really like that. Yeah, and uh, I wonder if it was because those Lings were there. He's like, well, I can't lift this now because then the Lings will get in. So I'm just going to make a single Hellion off of my factory and make some more Marines off the reactor before I switch. Yeah. I, did you see that? I actually didn't catch. Was that's, it because the Zerglings were there? That's correct, yeah. Okay. Intelligent decision there by June. And... Looks like he's just scout a little bit, sees the spine going up, pulls back. Stim, of course, started immediately as the tech lab has been placed on the barracks. And we're going to see actually another reactor made by June as he starts in the second, or third barracks rather, on his reactor. So he's got a very special build planned here. Yeah, I, this is interesting. I like this choice actually, though. It's going to give him a lot of units. He still has a command center up. He's going to get some extra SVs to put the pressure on here, but. It's a safer version of the gold, so his opponent can't really... I mean, it's July Zerg, after all. You never know. <laughs> well, I'm totally serious, but... Uh, he's going to be able to move his command center down now, but he's going to have a ton of production behind this. And the Zergling's going to come in and scout that command center. Dies, but actually does stop that from landing for just a moment extra. And a very quick lair on the way for July here. It's about a third of the way done. He's already got his gas being taken out the natural. And it looks like we're just going to have double reactor barracks with, of course, the oh, wow. stem continuing here. And June getting a third reactor for a starport. He's <laughs> just going very uh, Marine King Prime type style Marine medevac with stem. That that factory has just become the add-on lackey. It's made, it made a, a reactor for one of the barracks, and now it's making a reactor for the starport. And with the three Hellions that he's made, he's kept July's or guessing. July hasn't really been able to scout what's going on. He has no idea. He knows that there's no longer reactor Hellions coming out, but he doesn't know what. He doesn't know how many barracks. He's going to have to be aggressive here or do something to try to scout. Of course, the Spire is on the way. His Baneling Nest is finished. That Baneling Nest is going to be key in helping hold off these pushes that are going to come out. Both Jejun having Stim and a very healthy Marine count very soon. It's going to be hard for July. He's going to want Baneling Speed to help defend, and he doesn't have that yet. Yeah, and these Hellions out on the map just being a nuisance. Again, and scouting with the Zergling. Yeah, that, like that is the first glimpse that July gets of that massive Marine force. Yeah. He didn't know exactly what was going on. He, he's got a spine crawler. He's like, well, maybe it's Hellions. I need to be careful about Hellions. He's getting Banelings out as well. 
Of course, Banelings are going to be nice against the Marines as well. Maybe wise morphing those, but... And here's the here's the decision that Jelly's going to have to make. You, he's, he's reluctant to get Baneling speed right now because he wants to save his gas for the Spire. The Spire's going to finish. He's already got 650 gas right now. Probably going to try to make about 8 or 9 mutas when that pops. He's going to have that extra gas there. But he does not have Baneling speed, and if June decides to do a big push, which he's being very reluctant on right now, it, it's, uh, it's going to be hard for him to hold without Baneling speed. And here he goes, he's moving out. And uh, the reactor has been remade again on the factory now, so he's going to even rally Hellions in with this by the looks of things. Wow. And he's actually, he's just getting combat shields. And 1-1, one, one, he does not have stim yet. He I? does have stim. Oh, he does have stim. Never mind. Okay. Yeah, he got stim pretty does quick. He? Notice July has a really good tree spread, though. It's going to really help him with this. He's going to slow down this push from June. It's going to make June nervous about pushing out here. He's not going to know, you know, what's going on. Well, while he knows his opponent knows his every move as he moves more on the street. Look at how far wow. that creep spread is. He just took out so many creep tumors, though. He took out like six with one scan. That was pretty good. The meters are coming out now, though. This is going to change things. It means that July Zerg will be able to try and pick off stray units. There won't yeah. be any tanks with this, but if the medevacs are out of position, he can pick them up. Or he can counterattack, try and pick off SCVs in the main, because I don't think he... Does he have any turrets out yet? I don't think he does. No. Uh, he yet. does have, of course, eBay's, but no turrets. He's not prepared for this fast mutilus play. I think, oh, Jade should make it caught in the middle of the map as some harassment goes on. He's losing a lot of units here. Oh, and unfortunately, a little bit of miscontrol by Eliza. Oh. oh, nicely done by Jejun. Targets down the Banelings before they can actually get to the Marines and then lifts up the rest yeah, of the Marines. Losing a lot though and no turrets up here. I think it was a huge mess to misstep by June. Losing a lot of STVs. There are some Marines here, but July is forced to stem. He's gonna get out without losing any mutas. I feel June really missed his timing with this push. He could have done it. What I do like about his play, which is creative, is he's made so many reactors with his factories, he's now making off of three reactor barracks instead of two with one of the tech lab. Wow. And now he starts to use tank production. But with no siege <laughs> tanks, he's going to be hard pressed to take control of the map. July has got the third base. The factory's now made three reactors and he's not using any. Four. Of them. Four? Yeah, he made he made all four of those reactors. There's one on the starport and then three on barracks. I think he made that other one on the barracks, though. Actually, one. I checked it, though. He made, it, he made it on the factory, man. He made it on the factory? Yeah, he did. That's why I was like, I think he might rally Hellions with this, but no, he just made a fourth reactor with that factory. <laughs> anyway, um... <laughs> point hey. being, he is trying to get out tanks now, though, and that's yeah. going to be really nice, because otherwise, we're going to see, like we just saw, lots of Lings and mainly going to chase down his Marines. Imagine if he would have... Hey, he... Hold that thought, so he was going to come in here, he's going to be chased away. Imagine if he had not lost those Marines in the middle of the map, he'd have such a healthy Marine count right now from all those reactors, and it would be okay that he didn't have tanks just yet, but now he lost a lot of his Marines, his tank count's kind of low, and he's lost control of the game. He can't take a third base very easily. July smartly has taken a third, he's fully saturated there, he even has both of his gas up, he's taken a fourth right now at the bottom right. Siege mode is halfway done. Upgrades, right now July is starting plus two for his Mutas and his melee units as Jejun starts 2-2 two -two as well for his infantry, so even in upgrades in July, just doing a great job with his creep spread as well. He's even got creep yeah. build the map kind of somehow. Oh, because I think he probably went in and scanned and yeah, killed he off missed the, parts of it. Killed off the middle of it. That's kind of interesting. So yeah, Mutalus just trying to be annoying here. There are a good number of turrets out now though, so Mutas are not going to be able to do too much. Yeah. They're more going to be now for trying to pick off tanks and trying to pick off yeah. reinforcements. I like June trying to trap those Mutas there. You notice he kept his Marines on the outside trying to catch the Mutas as they flew away, but he was not quite able to get them. Look at the Marine production from June though. He's constantly getting six Marines out of the time. He's been able to continue that this entire time. He hasn't lost a ton of Marines since that first engagement, but July just has the map. He's got a really good amount of upgrades. And oh no, but he gets caught on siege! And the Lings immediately surround the tanks. There's only two of them. They barely get off the shot. A ton of Banelings land on the Marines! Horrible splitting from June, and his entire army gets obliterated. And Jelizerg is just basically taking complete yeah. control of the rest of this game. There's nothing you can do. Great decision making by July to go for that engagement. There was no room to split the Marines, and this is going to be the end of the game, I think, Moltrap. Yep. Bailings rolling through, completely destroying everything in the middle of the line. The Mulas don't even care about the Marines with medevacs. There's so many of them. The tank's going to go down. Lings in the main for the GG from June and. I think we did see uh, June just basically get outclassed.
He made that one, his timing for that Marine push seemed good, but he waited too long. He didn't go, you know? And then July's Creed Fred was too, too strong. He just had barely enough bailings out. He saved his resources for Mutas. And that's the key with that push. You always, as a Terran, you want to push as the Spire's finishing yeah. to make the Zerg go, whoa, do I make bailings or Mutas? And that push is not meant to kill someone, but it's meant to keep the Mutalist count low. In this case, not only did all the Mutalists get made, but also bailings were made, and he lost his entire army. Everything went wrong with that first push. Yeah. Then he was stuck. He had a, a creative idea with a factory making four different add-ons so we could really get his uh, production up. So we get the double medevacs out, double marines on all of his barracks. As soon as combat shields were done, he switched it. But I have to say, uh, just his timing with that push was a little bit off. He could have gone a little bit sooner. And then from there, July had the third base up. He had a healthy mutilist count, and he just controlled the game. Really good creep spread. And July, July didn't win the game as much as June lost it, but <laughs> July just did not make any mistakes. He yeah. was flawless the entire mm -hmm. game. Didn't do anything exceptional, just played really strongly. Smart decision making, really quick spire, and really good creep yeah. spread as well. Yeah, and I mean, we were talking before about how we're not sure if July Zerg is completely in it. He might be out of practice. He's a little bit inconsistent. But he has so much experience in RTS gaming that he just, I mean, he just naturally knows exactly what to do, naturally has really good control almost all the time. So not surprising to see him take advantage of those mistakes. Yeah. Well, um... Our next map is going to be Crossfire, so... Will it really this time? Yeah, it really will be this time, I can <laughs> okay. see it. Um, it's map number 142,567. But, uh... I think... This map is going to fare well for June. There are so in some ways, this map is good for Terran, in some ways good for Zerg. It's very debatable. Um, one of the really good strengths of this map for Zerg is a Mutalist play. You can use Mutalist to pick off tanks quite easily on the middle of the map. But using melee units like Zerglings and Banelings is difficult to do on all of those ramps. Consider though, Baneling landmines are very effective because of those same ramps. There's going to be True. a lot of scanning for June. We'll yep. see how this map plays out. Are you ready, Mole Trap? I am ready indeed, Wolf. I can't wait for this game to get underway. We get to see the God of War, July Zerg himself, against this old newcomer, I guess, named June. We'll find out if he's improved here at the next game at the GSL Code A.